Hey guys, this is Sean Theodore, pastor of Abundant Grace Church. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to overcome spiritual warfare and the keys to having success in defeating that foe that's attacking us daily, and that's the enemy, that's Satan. And how does he come at us? He comes at us in many different ways. He comes at us through physical attack. He may oppress your body. He comes at you through your mind. He barrages your mind daily with thoughts. He comes at you through temptation. He's called the tempter. He tries to discourage you through your mind. He also brings other people against you. He uses other people to attack. The devil is launching attacks in many different ways. And so we gotta understand his devices. It says, unless Satan get advantage over us, we're not ignorant of his devices. So I'm gonna be getting into the book of James chapter four, and I wanna talk about the keys to having spiritual victory over the enemy and I believe that you already do have the victory so I'm gonna get right into the Word of God and before I do I encourage you to hit subscribe below hit that subscribe button we're up to 630 subscribers and I just want to thank everybody for your support and I encourage you to do that hit subscribe our goal is 1,000 we're on our way to 1,000 subs and the Lord is gonna bless us so we can go live stream your subscriptions, all of the people who subscribe will bring us that much closer to 1,000. When we get there, we'll be able to live stream our church services and I'll be able to do some live streaming through our devotions and it'd be a real blessing to, to get there. So, um, but I also decided I wanna do three devotionals some weeks, but I've decided that some other weeks, I may alternate weeks, I may do two devotionals, depending on how the Lord is leading. I don't wanna have a set number because the Lord told me just recently, he says, I'm gonna lead you and guide you on how many devotions I want you to do per week. So my heart is to, my passion is to do as many devotions as possible, and I'd love to do three, but I'm gonna alternate, sometimes three, sometimes two. This is because of the Lord is leading, so thank you so much for being a blessing. I wanna get right into the scriptures today. I wanna talk about how to overcome this devil who's attacking us. You can overcome and live that victorious, free life that God has for you. So I'm gonna go right into the book of James, chapter four, without further ado, and I believe that God has a word for you today. So I'm going right into James, chapter four, and I'm gonna read verse seven. It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let me read that again. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, James 4, 8 says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. It says, Be afflicted, and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves, therefore, in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Here's how you get victory over the devil when he is attacking. It says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So it gives you two specific points, and James points it out here. He says, here's the things you do. Here's what you implement. First thing you need to do, you want to overcome the devil? It says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Very important. So if you want to cast out the devil and you're living a life that's kind of half-hearted to the Lord, you're not really submitting to him, you're not sold out to Jesus, and then the devil comes and attacks you, you know what? He's going to have a stronghold in your life and you're going to have a hard time casting him out if you're not submitted to the Lord first. So what we must do is submit 100% to the Lord. That means if the devil's attacking you and you're kind of drifting from the Lord, just repent. Get on your knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry I haven't been living that Christian life that I need to live. Lord, I turn from that and I, I come to you. Cleanse me. I submit to your will. Take it in prayer. If you're not submitted, if you're kind of drifting from the Lord. He's all about grace. Just come boldly to the throne of grace. Say, I submit to you, Lord. I give you my life. I surrender to you. And once you've done that, bang, the devil's in big trouble. Because now, God, you're in right standings with the Lord. You're surrendering to his will. It says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. That's the first step. Surrender to him. If you've fallen short, Get back up. A just man falls seven times, rises up again. We need some people, champions, who don't condemn themselves, but get back up and stay the course because we're not going to be perfect, but we must be submitting. We must be taking up our cross, following Jesus, so we have that power and that anointing and Jesus working with us because if we're submitted to him, he's with us. You have 
two working with you. The Bible says when there's two, there's power. You can have agreement. You say, I don't know who to agree with in this. Well, you know, you can agree with the Holy Spirit. You can agree with Jesus Christ. Because when two agree is touching anything, it shall be done. So get in agreement with the Lord. It says a two is strong, but a threefold cord shall not be quickly broken. So the more people you can get in agreement with, the stronger you get. But what I encourage you to do today is submit to God's will. Take up the cross. Submit to God's plan, his purpose. Whether you like it or not, whether it's easy or hard, usually we go through trials, but in those trials, submit to the Lord. Then it says resist the devil. What does that word resist in the Greek mean? It doesn't mean, oh, okay, devil, uh, I'll just resist this and I'll just hold on until he, he leaves me alone. That's not what this means. It's not a passive word. It's not trying to just hold on. Resist in the Greek means to stand against, to oppose, or withstand. You're standing against him. You're resisting him, but you're opposing him. That means you're going on offense. So when you submit to God, then you get up and you go on offense. And you begin to say with an authoritative voice and an authoritative um, mannerisms and your actions and everything, you need to be authoritative in your character. You need to show a countenance that is bold before the devil and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke these thoughts. I submit to God. I rebuke you. You must flee. The word says it. The word says, I have submitted to God. I rebuke you. I am taking authority over you. I am resisting you. I bind you. I cast you out. I rebuke you, devil. And the Bible says, you do those two things, he will flee. He will flee. He may come back, but he will flee. Kick him out. Every time he comes, kick him out. Take authority. Use the word of God. The Bible says in Luke 10, 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and not Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Have power. The Bible says Jesus has given you power. In his name you shall cast out devils. In my name you shall take authority. It says heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely receive, freely give. That's Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. Luke 10, 19 and 10, 20 says the spirits are subject unto you through the name of Jesus Christ. So Luke 10, 20 says you have power over the devil. And here's what else you do. It continues on. It says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. So when you're drawing nigh to God, you will be strong in your spiritual warfare because God's drawing nigh to you. You must move to God. We love him because he first loved us, but you know what? He's not going to impose himself on you because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He says he's waiting for you to come to him. He don't force himself on anybody. He's saying, I'm here. I love you. My love is here. My grace is here. My mercy is here. Draw nigh to me. Come to me. He says, if any man come unto me, I will in no wise cast you out. He loves you. He wants you to come to him. And we have access because of the cross. We can go directly to Jesus Christ through prayer. That's a powerful tool. So what we need to do is draw nigh unto God. He will draw nigh unto you. And then when the devil comes, you're already nigh to the Lord. If the Lord's nigh to you, how's the devil getting in? He can't. So that's another point that we need to add. Then it says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. So cleanse your hands. That means when you make mistakes, go to the Lord. 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. If any man sin, he has an advocate, a defender. He's your lawyer. He's your defender. He's your advocate. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's there to help you overcome. So how do you overcome the devil? Submit, resist. Draw closer to God. And what else does it say? Cleanse your hearts. Every time you make mistakes, you know what? You don't need to beat yourself up. It says, cleanse your hands. Go to the Lord. How do you get cleansed? It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. How do you do it? You just confess your sins and he'll cleanse you. He's awesome. He's that good. Just go to the Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. I, I shouldn't have done that. He'll cleanse you and you'll be right back, right, right back doing God's will. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at your heart as being bent toward obedience. So God is good. And then it says, cleanse your hands. Ye sinners, purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Don't be double-minded when you're casting out the devil. Don't have doubt, out with the doubt, in with the faith. We need to cast out the devil. When you do it, you got to do it by faith, too. Because if you don't do it with boldness and faith and confidence, the devil sees you, you have lack in faith, then you know what? He's going to get in. So he says, above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The armor of God, take up the armor of God, the word of God, take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Take the uh, belt of truth, get, you know, the your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know what? The word of God, the, the helmet of salvation, all of these armors that you need to take up to fight against the devil. And what else does it say? It says, 
Be afflicted and mourn and weep and left, let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. When you make a mistake, be contrite and broken before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. And be serious about it and say, Lord, I messed up here. I, I don't want to keep doing that. I repent. I'm coming to you with a humble heart. It says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. If you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, he's going to lift you up, and he's going to help you overcome the devil. You have all the tools, the weapons of our warfare, and our carnal, but mighty to go through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. Use the weapons, the word, prayer, faith, and submission to the Lord, and you will get victory. If this devotion blessed you, I encourage you to hit subscribe below. You could put a comment below too and let me know what you think. Like this video and may God bless you as you continue to serve him. Thank you for watching.